Hi, I'm Mr. Beat. I hope you're doing well. And thanks for joining us today as we look at a beautiful map. And if you know anything about myself, I, I love maps. I've always been fascinated by maps. At one time, I wanted to be a cartographer, but that was before I realized I wasn't that good at math. Uh, but yeah, I when I was a kid, I would just stare at maps for hours. And something that a lot of people don't realize about maps is they're always changing, even in recent years. Like there's this kind of misconception that, you know, maps are static and that uh, it's just it's been that way forever. But even in American history, we've had lots of changes to our map, especially due to uh, the endless expansion of the country over the years. And so it is it is pretty revealing to go back and look at old maps and to assume that our their current map that we have with our weird borders. I'm looking at you, Maryland. Uh, don't don't assume that they're going to stay that way because uh, it's just they're arbitrary in many ways. A lot of times maps are the borders are just kind of like, what? Why? <laughs> and you learn the history of them. and It's like, that's why would that border exist? That's crazy. So I think it is always a good idea to kind of, from time to time, re-examine, re-evaluate uh, our current borders that we have. And so within the United States, uh, we do have 50 states. There's still there's constantly talk of adding a 51st state or 52nd, maybe Puerto Rico, maybe D.C. Uh, but even then, those borders wouldn't change. But there's also talk sometimes of like people wanting to break away within a state and form their own state, like Jefferson in California. They like, we have nothing in common with the rest of the state. Why should we stick with them? You know, so they feel underrepresented. So, and you all know how important representation is for me, um, being in a supposed representative democracy, representative democracy, a republic, um, we should, you know, feel like our, representatives in Washington, D.C. really are voting in our best interest. So without me rambling any further, uh, a couple months ago, uh, a viewer of the channel reached out to me and sent me a map that he had made, and I was quite impressed. I I loved it. And it's a something just to mostly, it's a hypothetical. It's uh, what if you had, if you redrew all the states, and you tried your very best to make every state um, have approximately the same population. So every single state was roughly the same population. And you try to do it in a way where you were, you were grouping together residents who had things in common, uh, shared heritage, culture, stuff like that. And instead of 50, let's just make it 100. So... I'm going to introduce to you the creator of, a, of such a map that it's been on Reddit. If you follow the subreddit map porn, you might have seen it there, maybe other places. Um, but Doug, Al is it Alcedo? Is it uh, Alcedo? Alcedo. Yeah. Doug Alcedo. I, I should have asked you that before we went on the air. But welcome, Doug, hey, thank the you. creator of this map we're going to look at. So thanks for joining me in this live stream. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure. And uh, if you want to first just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so my name is Doug. Um, I uh, kind of similarly to Mr. Beat, I just uh, loved looking at maps ever since I was a little kid. And uh, um, um, I want to say in like uh, the mid 2010s, sometime, somebody made a map of um, 50 equally populated states and uh, I was very interested in that and um, I tried many times to make something similar um, finally I came sort of came up with a way to uh, use uh, this uh, this map that the US census makes um, to kind of estimate uh, state populations and um, uh, the first time was very rough. I came out with like 39 states. So clearly there was some uh, mistakes there. Um, 
but I shared it anyway. People really liked it. Uh, then I made a 50 state one and then I thought, why not make it a hundred? And, um, and then people really wanted me to name them. So I named the states and, um, I got a lot of positive feedback for it. And, um, so yeah, it's been really cool. Uh, and I'm happy to share it with you guys. All right. Well, here is the map. Um, actually, let me try, let me try to do this uh, in a way where. Oh gosh, what did I do before? There it is. Okay, <laughs> here is the map. We're gonna look at it, and uh, obviously zoom in on on uh, each of the 100 states and regions. But uh, I think the coolest thing about it, it's a nice even number. It's twice as much as we have now, and I think a lot of people, a lot of Americans, complain that we don't. Uh, have an, enough representation so we need more representatives and so if we decide in the future like you know we want to we still want to have senators we still want to have uh, a bicameral legislative branch where there's two houses the senate and house of representatives so if you have if you still have states where there's only two senators per state representing maybe something like this makes a lot more sense and it would appease a lot more people that don't like the way that the Senate is set up, which was set up in, you know, the 1780s. So many argue it's uh, antiquated, not up with times. Uh, so, yeah, like, I think at the very least, I'm hoping this live stream, us looking at this map and talking about it, will uh, hopefully generate a conversation moving forward. A lot of folks watching are younger. Um, I'm not sure how old you are, Doug, but, like, uh, who knows how many people could watching this who will later actually have the power to do something about this uh, no, that's true. and weird to think oh. about 30 years in the future anyway so oh my audio is cutting out uh oh it's it's fine now okay looks like yeah let me know on the <clears throat> somebody said that they they farted sorry about that um but yeah in the <laughs> comments we we will respond as best we can to the comments obviously a super chat will have priority as we look at, at this map but doug uh this is the latest version of this. When did you make this one? Uh, this is uh, from July of last year. So I haven't really worked on it or made any major updates in about a year. And it's based off the census data from 2020? Um, actually, no. Um, at the time I started working on it, uh, it's uh, there was it was the census estimates from 2019. Okay. Well, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So... I'm going to let you share your um, your map on your side. And, and uh, if you sure. first zoom in on the northeast, the New England yeah. area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's such a high res uh, image, which, by the way, I think. Uh, We'll put a link to it if anyone wants to download it in the description of this. But yeah, so it takes a little while to load up. So this is what we're looking at right now. Uh, used to be New England, so Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. So we have up here the uh, yeah what used to be Maine, uh, but you've lumped you've got a, much of Vermont in there and mm -hmm. New Hampshire. So what was the rationale for lumping those three together? Um, well, it has a lot to do with Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, this is, uh, it's a surprisingly large metropolitan area, at least for me, I didn't realize before I made this map, how many people lived in Manchester. Um, <laughs> so, um, with Northern New England, kind of North of there being very rural, very sparsely populated, I kind of wanted to keep all of those, uh, sparsely populated areas together, I guess, to create a more, yeah. uh, uh, how would you say, a homogenous state? I don't know. Um, well, I yeah, just, no, I, it's just more just, rural. It's, I would yeah. say, and it's named, it's pronounced Wabanaki. Is that right? Um, I think so. I mean, um, I'm actually not sure, but, uh, I imagine <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We never say these words out loud. It's like, we're always reading. Right. It. Um, uh, but yeah, correct us in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's a mostly rural area and it's 
we're, we're talking about an area today that is um, heavily wooded and yeah. a lot of a lot of hunters and not necessarily a whole lot of agriculture. So that's another thing. Like it's the timber industry is big, um, but also kind of more I would say um, independent. Like it's interesting. Vermont kind of has that reputation as a uh, kind of a left leaning state in recent mm -hmm. years, but Honestly, I think it's more, it's more left in a libertarian way. I hmm. think, uh, yeah, like they, I think a lot of times they're not okay with gov the government doing certain things. Now that said, some of the highest taxes in the, the country are in Vermont and hmm. that, that's kind of a weird situation, but thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. I hope you have a good fourth as well. All right. Yeah. So if you could scroll down uh, to more heavily populated areas here. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Merrimack, which is like you said, the Manchester, like a lot of that Southern New Hampshire where most of the folks in New Hampshire live, Western right. Massachusetts. Um, so why do you separate this from uh, say Boston? Like the, what, what would you say like the differences maybe between Merrimack and Boston? Well, so the goal is to have a state that's about 3.3 million people. And um, the Boston metro area has uh, a, a, around, the, around that amount. So it could, I couldn't make it bigger. Um, <laughs> and I want to keep cities all together if I can. So I want to keep, I don't want to have a border going down the middle of Boston. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I could have gone in different, uh, different ways with this. I could have put Manchester up with Maine. I could have had Worcester down with uh, uh, Providence, but um, I tried a few things and this is just what I like the most. I like it. I, I mean, I, I agree with how you did it, um, but I, I could, because I think that Western Massachusetts does have a lot more in common with Southern New Hampshire, you know? The, uh, so yeah, Boston by itself makes sense to me. You got Narragansett, uh, which is mostly Rhode Island, but also Eastern Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And then you, still, you still left Connecticut, which um, I think a lot of people joke about Connecticut, like East, or I'm sorry, West Connecticut basically being like hmm. everybody that drives to New York. <laughs> so that makes sense being a more, um, a separate one as well. well another uh, suggestion I got was um, having... Um, that Western Connecticut together with Springfield, Massachusetts, because a lot of people apparently feel that Western Massachusetts has a lot in common with Western Connecticut and uh, with uh, Springfield and Hartford both being on the Connecticut River. A lot of people felt that would have made sense, but mm. uh, it's just tricky to get everything just right. No, I yeah, I get that for sure. Um, so yeah, you scroll down a little bit more if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, there you go. Okay, so Mohawk. Uh, basically, we have two major new uh, upstate New York um, states, new states, which uh, I also agree with. Nothing really stands out here. Is like, I mean, it's, it's. Did you try to follow rivers as much as possible, or did you uh, do county like? I you, did try to. Um... So it was difficult to get uh, figure out exactly where all the rivers were. Um, <laughs> there may have been a better way of doing this, but I had this. I had this U.S. Census map. It's it's their map of all of the core based statistical areas in the country, so micropolitan areas and metropolitan areas, and um, it's not a common um, projection. It's kind of the type of map projection that curves. Like if you look at that border between uh, uh, the U.S. and Canada, it's, it has a curve to it. So I was trying to overlay different river maps on top of this to get realistic boundaries, but I couldn't find any good river maps that had that same kind of projection. So I ended up having to uh, uh, puppet warp these <laughs> river maps to sort of match their state boundaries. And um, mm. so they might not all be... Um, super accurate but i did try to follow actual rivers and geographical features the best i could yeah so these aren't just random squiggles in other words 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thanks for clarifying that. And I, yeah. I won't be too hard on yourself because that seems like a <laughs> momentous task to try to be completely 100% accurate with that. Um, right. One thing I, that I noticed right off the bat with Niagara, uh, obviously Buffalo and Rochester and, all, and Syracuse, all that, you know, the Finger Lakes region, that seems very logical mm -hmm. to put together. I like how you went, you kept going further southwest with Erie. If mm. people don't realize Erie actually is part of that little pointy part of Pennsylvania. And yeah, a lot of um, northern, northwestern Pennsylvania does have a lot in common with western New York. And so I, I think you did great, like going pretty much all the way to Cleveland here with that state. Mm. Cool. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I thought with them both being on Great Lakes, uh, people have a lot of identity with the Great Lakes and it'd be nice to keep those areas together. Absolutely. I was going to say that as well. Yeah. And yeah, like, I mean, obviously with New York, it gets, there's just so many people there. You got tens of millions of people in this area. So you essentially just split New York City uh, into West New York and East New York. Right. Staten Island obviously has a lot of, I mean, it's a lot different than say the Bronx um, yeah. or even like Brooklyn for sure. Brooklyn's, I mean, yeah. So it's more like blue collar, I would say. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I can kind of see now you do have Manhattan lumped in with Staten Island, which I think uh, a lot of folks would be kind of yeah like, weirded yeah. out about by, but, you know. Well, I, I really wanted to keep New York as together as I could. I didn't want to put uh, Staten Island in with New Jersey, even though I'm sure a lot of people would have been fine with that. Um, yeah, I, I think I just wanted to keep New York with New York and, um, yeah, I tried a lot of different things and this is just what I ended up with. Well, the district that, or the, I'm sorry, the new state that the Bronx is, is in, what is that called? I can't really make it up very well. It's uh, Mahankatuck. Mahankatuck. Okay. So, Mahankatuck, yeah, yeah. so the Bronx is, is also lumped in with a lot of the Northern suburbs of New York before you get, right. up, get to upstate. So I thought that was also... A little bit of a uh, like I probably would do that one a little bit differently myself, but yeah, you know. sure. Um, and then are you able to zoom in a little bit more on the New York uh, area? Let's see. Yes, can, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, you got over uh, west of New York. You got the wow. This is just there's I forget how many people live in. New Jersey too. <laughs> like you yeah. have like basically the Western suburbs of New York, um, as Passaic. 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 <laughs> I'm really bad at Native American names. Sorry. Uh, I think it's the name of a river over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you do something really great that a lot of New Jersey residents will agree with and you divide up New Jersey, uh, into North and South. So I think if yeah. you're from New Jersey in the comments, I'm sure you agree that that's, yeah, that's a pretty freaking good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Philadelphia, obviously. Um, so what was the, I do have a question here with Pennsylvania, where it used to be Pennsylvania here. So what was your rationale with uh, kind of dividing up where you did, where um, between Delmarva and Susquehanna, like what was your rationale like, Th with that being the spot where Hamburg is in Quakertown? Um, well, I think what happened, if I remember correctly, um, I really wanted Delmarva to be a state. I just thought that was a cool idea. Uh, yeah. Delmarva Peninsula as one state. And so what I think I did is I kind of worked my way up from the bottom and I was adding uh, different, you know, uh, statistical areas until I reach that population threshold. And um, okay, that's just kind of where the border ended up. Yeah. I, I don't think like, I had any like cultural reasons for that. Once you got to 3.3 .3 million, you're like, okay. <laughs> All right. Basically, yeah. And that's really how most of these states went. Um, like I'm from Southern California. So uh, when we get to that area is kind of where I have like the most knowledge, I guess. Um, everywhere else, you know, I lived off. I also lived in Denver and Western North Carolina, but everywhere else I'm kind of foggy on, and so mm -hmm. yeah. Great suggestion there, Drew. I will 
actually it's already on my list so thank you for that <laughs> okay yeah so i appreciate the honesty uh doug with that <laughs> but yeah honestly though i think a lot of these um ended up being fairly accurate for cultural differences so yeah um, but yeah, yeah like you know you got so yeah the um out west we already talked about allegheny um, South Chesapeake is another interesting one because it's kind of it's so weirdly shaped. Yeah, you just go down a little bit there. Yeah, um, I I kind of see the rationale. The only beef I have with this one is, you know, Western South Chesapeake here would be all a very different culture yeah. than down by the bay. You know, Absolutely. down by the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, right. so I would probably do that one different. Like I would, how I would do this. You know, how you have a North Chesapeake and South Chesapeake. I would yeah. have, I would split it um, north south. So the border, you'd have a Chesapeake province, and then you'd have like where South Chesapeake is. I would try to do like maybe a Appalachian, North Appalachian region or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Not no, saying that you have to do that, but it's just my suggestion. No, I like, I appreciate it. Um, Potomac makes perfect sense to me. That whole area has a lot in common. A lot of it's, um, of course, obviously suburbs to D.C. and right, and that includes Washington D.C. Oh, it does. I was I was yeah. gonna have a question about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if you could keep scrolling down to what was currently Virginia. Yeah, sure. Appalachia makes perfect sense. I mean, you're, you've got most of West Virginia in there. You've got um, you've got current parts of west virginia not west virginia but west virginia the state um <laughs> western virginia you've got uh western um north carolina mm -hmm. also even got parts west parts of uh western south carolina so uh i i do like this um essentially it's just like a sparsely settled area but you do have a few big cities on the edges um yeah, it's, very, uh, it's very south heavy very well, most of the population being down in the south and state. Yeah, I mean it's that's how it has to be because not many people living in the the mountains. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like also like you have Rappahannock and Pomlico, um separated like that. Um, do you have an explanation why you separated it the way you did? I mean, I. Um, I might be able to guess it, but <laughs> let me let me think. Um, I don't think I really don't think I have a particular reason. I mean, a lot of this is just adding up um, statistical areas until I get to that three point three million. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. if you could stroll down just a little bit more, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. So Jacksonville is in Pamlico. And is that how you pronounce that, Pamlico? I think so. <laughs> um, so we have basically, I think, I guess the question is like, you know, how much does Newport News have in common with Jacksonville? And in my opinion, I think it actually has quite a bit in common. I think, I mean, you know, you have, and you do have all the way, like you go all the way west to Roanoke, which um, I think that's a that's a mountain town so mm -hmm. maybe that's the oddball here but but yeah overall like even though you were just kind of trying to oh uh, that's roanoke rapids uh roanoke virginia is over in appalachia oh that makes sense there's roanoke over there way over. Oh, okay so then it makes perfect sense yeah yeah no because you've got essentially this is pamlico is hurricane area yeah mm -hmm. You got to worry about hurricanes, and that's that's something that they all have in common. Um, East yeah. Piedmont, I think, and West Piedmont. Like, um, did you, I guess, uh, have any rationale for that area? Well, uh, I lived in Asheville for uh, a year and a half, and so I did, did get this the, that idea of um, the North Carolina. They split the stayed up into these three geographical regions of the uh the mountains in the west and the piedmont in the middle and then um what do they call it 
in the in the east. I don't remember, but uh, the coastal area, the coastal plain. Oh, coastal plain, plain yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I wanted my map to reflect that a little bit. Good. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, I think just as important sometimes is not only is culture, but um, geographic differences, like not just physical features, but climate. Um, <laughs> and yeah, once you get um, west of Charlotte, starts to get a little hillier. Um, it's still fairly agricultural, though. Um, but then, yeah, you get to Rocky Top, where you said you were in Asheville. I have a friend that lives in Asheville as well. And that's, yeah, that's right up next to the mountains. And so... Pretty cool you, town. Yeah, yeah. And you've got it with uh, Knoxville, right? Which makes right. sense. They have a lot in common. Uh, you even have it all the way pretty much to Central Tennessee, which Middle Tennessee, as they call it there, they corrected me many times. Middle Tennessee, Mr. B. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, but Murfreesboro, which is just, um, that is the pretty much the uh, eastern edge of the, the next one over, if you want to actually, sure. yeah, that's fine. Okay, so there's Nashville. That's the, and you put Nashville with um, Chattanooga, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, Knoxville, I think Rocky top actually to me feels like a lot of those places have a lot in common. Like, um, it's all, again, it's a mostly mountainous area culturally. I feel like it's, it doesn't uh, quite, it, it's not, touristy too. I mean, they've got the, um, a lot, a lot of touristy, a lot of a tourist attraction in the, in the great smoky mountains area. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, and then. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of visitors. Okay. Um, and then you've got Atlanta, I assume in a separate state, right? Yeah. Okay. Upper Savannah. Uh, yeah. That's so that's parts of South Carolina with Northern North, uh, Eastern Georgia. Um, you've got parts of South Carolina also, it looks like, well, barely parts, I guess with, uh, most of Georgia. So Macon and Augusta are still yeah. in the same state, Altamaha. Uh, could you scroll down all the way to Florida? Sure. Or what is Florida? Okay. Yeah, there, that's good. Um, oh, yeah. So I forget how many people live in Florida. So we've got a ton of little states here. Oh, yeah. Orla okay, yeah. Orlando's, then that central Flor Florida area makes sense there. Kind of its own interior landlocked state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's another question I had for you. Like, did you try not to make landlocked states? Um I mean, did you, was that even, did um, that even come to the equation? I mean, it's impossible not to have any, but I mean, uh, yeah, I wasn't like actively trying to avoid it. Yeah. Cause I mean, um, landlocked states uh, and countries, uh, we, most geographers um, bring this up that they, they have a huge disadvantage regarding trade. So usually they struggle economically right. because of that. Yeah. Um, but sure. Orlando, Orlando has a lot of wealth there already with uh, all the tourists. Yeah. Traffic, so that'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that evens out. Um, I like how you divided up um, like Fort Lauderdale and North. Like that area is a lot different culturally than Miami and, and well, South. Well, that area is really difficult because there are so many people there. Yeah. Yeah. The Glades, of course, that makes sense where the Everglades are. And then it's a little mm -hmm. bit less sparsely populated, obviously Tampa. Yeah. I mean, this is fairly logical to me. Um, uh, oh, did you, what's the, what's that to the left there? Did you do the, uh, 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 yeah. Puerto oh, you Rico. did Puerto Rico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you, you put the Virgin Islands with Puerto Rico just so it would be a, uh, yeah. Well, they're they're close anyway, and um, um, this is one of the states, along with Long Island, that uh, deviates the most from that population threshold. Uh, mm -hmm. This this one goes quite a bit over. Uh, I can't remember. I want to say three point seven million, and then the uh, the Long Island state goes quite under. So maybe something like two point seven. So is that your biggest gap? Two point seven million to three point seven. Is that your uh, roughly, yeah, but it's just kind of those two states, whereas everything else is um, cl more closer, more in that two point. Right, we, we can work on this. We can <laughs> <laughs> more change. Okay, uh, could you please go to the 
southern yeah yeah southern united states now yeah all right so we were, we got the area basically still georgia um mm -hmm. alabama mississippi tennessee um alabama mostly the same i see though um although you you go all the way yeah it's basically alabama with some chunks missing okay yeah yeah uh no i mean oh auburn i guess is uh is Auburn, is that, that's, it's in Alabama, I thought, right? Auburn, uh, um, or I mean, currently. Maybe there's yeah, it's in Alabama. So that's, that's one uh, notable uh, part missing, but so that's part of Chattahoochee? Ch Chattahoochee, I guess. Chattahoochee, it's, yeah. it's another river, yeah. Okay. All right, could you, uh, Go west, please. Sure. A little, just a little bit. Okay, and then maybe drop down to where Louisiana is. There. Oh, okay. So you have that that Tallahassee region going. Yeah. All the, so I bet this your it was your logic basically that this is the Gulf area that. Yeah, the uh, the Gulf Coast, the uh, Florida Bama shores. Oh, it, it does have a lot in common. It really does. Like the the Gulf Coast in general, like. All the way from Panama City to um, yeah, I mean that whole coastal area f has a lot of resorts, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, and it's uh, this one makes sense to me. And then I am very glad that you separated. Um, this is something one of the first things I looked for when you first sent me this map. Actually, was New Orleans, like how you separated it out. And I guess there's not enough people that live in New Orleans itself, right? You had to like expand it to right. Indiana. But yeah, right. I, mean, I mean, you got Lafayette there, you've got Baton Rouge. That's that's essentially, that's where the Acadians ended up. They ended up in modern day Southern Louisiana. If you go to Northern Louisiana, you're not gonna, it's a completely different culture. Yeah, and I think it was a Reddit user who actually gave me the name for that. Let me, I think I had it over here. Uh, I, I don't know how to say this, but uh, if oh. you look under the special thanks, yeah. So credit to them for uh, drawing my attention to that word. Thank you, Reddit users. Heck yeah. Okay, we can work our way up north to the Midwest now a little bit. Um, oh, uh, Wachita. Um, so that's yeah. Washita. Washita. Dang, I always mess yeah. that up. Washita, so northern Louisiana, uh, Arkansas, southern Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, western Mississippi. So. Mm -hmm. um, and you got actually part, parts of Texas in there too. It looks like in even uh, maybe Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. It'd be if if any that'd be at all. Um, yeah. I if maybe you're just if you're watching and you want to uh, download this map, I'm going to add that um, after we get done streaming. So. Oh yeah. It's on my website too. If you go there, and then if you look at the at the links on the left, you use a link to the map. Oh, cool! Nice, nice. Okay. Um, before we look at Texas, let, yeah, let's go no further north, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Good. Good. Ozark, definitely its own distinct region in the United States. So. Yeah, and that's a little bit different than um, what is actually considered the Ozark. So, I had to go beyond the Ozarks to make it make the population work. If I were to make a change here, cause this is, I'm very familiar with this area, not living too far away. Um, I would make, instead of having um, Northeastern Arkansas part of this region, like Jonesboro, I would mm -hmm. actually go further North with Missouri. Cause a lot of the, if you, can you scroll up just a little bit more? Yeah. So if you look at St. Louis, actually a lot like where Farmington is and uh, mm -hmm. that confluence area, a lot of that actually is pretty hilly and culturally, I think has a lot in common with Ozark. Mm, okay. The Ozarks. Yeah. So actually even Jefferson city, I would, I would include Jefferson city in that to, instead of uh, Northeastern Arkansas, but. Good to know. Um, okay, yeah. So then we got the oh, very familiar with this part of the country. Um, so Kansas <laughs> City, Lawrence, uh, where I live. Uh, this is South Osage, and yes. what's interesting to me about this is like Lawrence is, is home of the University of Kansas, and 
our big rival is University of Missouri in Columbia, another college town over there in Missouri, uh, <laughs> where we'd be in the same. Uh, <laughs> so I think like, culturally, this is like a bit of a shock, like just me being a local, but. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for the most part, though, I mean, this makes sense. I mean, this is all area. This whole South Osage area basically does revolve around Kansas City. So, yeah, pretty logical. If I were to make changes, I would actually try to bring Columbia over to the St. Louis region, Confluence. And okay. I would actually have try to bring Topeka and Manhattan to the South Osage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, I think you need to go a little bit to the east first before we go north. Yeah. We didn't see. Yeah. There we go. Yes. Okay. So the Midwest here, we've got well, what else? Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana. Uh Bluegrass, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that one actually makes a lot of sense to me. You got literally the bluegrass part of the state all together um, with Frankfurt as well. I think so. I think it might be a little off. Yeah, you maybe could drag it further west, I think, almost all the way to Louisville. Or uh, Louisville. Louisville. Uh, yeah, what's with Quasioto? Quasiado. Oh, Quasiado. Yeah. There's no Q. It's an O. So okay. it's Wasiado. Yeah. Wasiado. It's a tough one for me. Well, um, yeah, what was the rationale for that? Like, because that's that's a pretty big area east and uh, west. Yeah, not a lot of people in Kentucky, it turns out. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I really wanted that blue grace, bluegrass state to work so I, I think i probably prioritized that one before i, I had started working on kentucky the rest mm -hmm. of kentucky um as far as the name um i'd have to look it up i don't remember off the top of my head but um maybe it was a river or something hmm. yeah i'm just astounded at how many rivers i don't know about <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really know about him either. I, I really scoured uh, Wikipedia trying to come up with these names. <laughs> well, hey, hopefully after this live stream, you'll get a flood of more suggestions. <laughs> yeah, I welcome it yeah, for sure. All right, let's go north. Straight north, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, a lot more people up here. We already talked a little bit about the Cleveland area, Cuyahoga. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. That looks pretty, that's actually, um, we're getting into very, I mean, that's where blogging through history lives around that area. So I think he would actually approve of that one. You got Muskegon, which includes Columbus, Lancaster. Oh yeah. Where, oh, you, oh, Marietta is where you put the, uh, the border. Is, it, is that Ohio river right there? Or is it? No, that's too far North. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I could look that up on Google maps. Um, Okay. Mommy with uh essentially that's like north northwestern um Ohio and a little bit of Michigan. You put Ann Arbor in the same one as that is the Ohio River. Oh the Ohio it is the Ohio River. Okay. Yeah. It just goes down after that. I right. interesting. Uh yeah, so oh no, no, the Ohio River is further south, right? That's down by well, I look, I'm looking at uh, Marietta, uh, Ohio, on um, Google Maps, and that's right on the on the border with West Virginia. Oh yeah, that's the that's the intersection of the Ohio River and the the river we're looking at though is the Muskegon River. That's the one. Yeah. So, okay, uh, that was the one I meant. Um. So you got Fort Wayne area with South South Bend. Um, essentially, you Indianapolis is um, a lot of these seem pretty good. Like because I think culturally, all these areas pretty much have a lot in common, mm -hmm. including the major cities. So what'd you do with Indianapolis? Uh, it's down here in Wapahani. Okay, so you put it with. Like all the way down to Evansville. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could see that. Um, and then, okay, so Wabash or Wabash or Wabash. That's uh, 
essentially essentially you have all the way over to uh western illinois all the way south oh no that's still illinois so essentially most of that's illinois and indiana a little yeah. bit of michigan yeah but also like the extreme suburbs of um chicago yes chicago was a difficult one yeah, Chicago being the uh, um, the third biggest metro area in the state, I think, or in the country. Uh, it is, yeah. Uh, it's really uh, tricky figuring, trying to figure out how to split that up, and I'm sure I didn't. I'm sure, I'm sure I did a terrible job at it. Could you zoom in on Chicago a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you got some western. A lot of the western suburbs of Chicago are their own thing. Uh, Des Plaines, which uh, is actually a, the name of a one of the suburbs out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Naperville, Aurora. And then you put Milwaukee in a separate one with Madison. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I think this is not that bad. I think it's because they're. Yeah. No, this makes this makes sense to me. I mean, some of the areas in northern Illinois and uh, southern Wisconsin might seem a little out of place, but okay. What about the uh, Minnesota? Yeah, um, sure, uh, big state over here. Uh, you get the zig. I can do that. That's one big one. Yeah, Detroit obviously its own. Oh, uh, uh, your Saginaw. Yeah, so that's like okay. So you. I'm trying to like remember my map here. Okay, so Saginaw is uh, uh, it's it's okay, it's, it's this straight uh, between right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, That's all. Um, it's it's pretty much all. Yeah, that, uh, that's all Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to try to make a map where. The, the upper peninsula and the lower peninsula were separated. I thought that would be cool. I like how you put the upper peninsula with Wisconsin, with northern Wisconsin and central Wisconsin. Um, although that's a really big one. You had a. OK, so you. you yeah. So Minneapolis, obviously a separate one. You just call it Twin Cities. Um, right. That's a good name for it. Yeah. Could you zoom out just a little? Sure. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, okay, you go all the way to where's Fargo? Oh, Fargo's over there. Okay. So, almost all the way to current the current Dakotas. Yeah. Um, but most of Minneapolis and most of Wisconsin for Superior, just because they're so sparsely populated, huh? Right. You're starting to get uh, some really sparsely populated areas out here. So you have town. I mean, Green Bay and Duluth actually, I would say, have a lot in common. Um. Rochester, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not too far fetched. Sorry, I'm doing all the talking here. Do you, do you yeah. have anything to say about the Upper Midwest? <laughs> well, uh, no, because I don't. I have never lived out here, or been out here, really. So that's kind of. Um, I'm sure I'll have more to say when we get to the West, but uh, yeah, it's it's mostly it's just trying to fill up those uh, population thresholds and. Um, I really don't know a whole lot about this area. Well, I, I think mo most already know that once you get to this point, um, you're, you're now entering the Great Plains. And so much more sparsely populated, which explains the huge states. And less um, uh, less frequent rivers and less geological features. So you get a lot more uh, sharp corners and mm -hmm. borders. Yeah, Santee. Or Santi is huge. It's like it goes if if you don't know where we're looking at here, we're looking at basically the both the Dakotas. Yeah. Um, we're looking at parts of Nebraska, parts of Wyoming, even yeah. parts of Colorado. Yeah. Montana. It, it might be the second biggest state after the one with Alaska. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's not you can't there's no easy way to do that. No. But I think uh if the, if it was possible, to me, it makes more sense to lump in um, north, south, like 
Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota have much more in common, at least in the East. And like, I would try to not go so far West with Santee and like yeah. big sky, which is up there, the green up North of Santee that, I mean, I guess I had, my- I had something different um, in an older version of the map, something very different. And I, I changed it radically because I wanted to keep um, all of the, uh, the great Sioux nation uh, people together in the same state. Oh. Because I thought that would be nice. Because originally it might have been more like what you were talking about. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I wanted to change it to keep that um, because that's it's one of the bigger Native American populations in the country, and I wanted to. Uh, I didn't want to chop them up. It makes yeah, that makes sense. All right, uh, yeah. If you can zoom in again and work your way south a little bit. All right. Well, I used to live in Omaha, so let me see. You good? You got Omaha, Lincoln, and I am accepting uh, name suggestions for this state. Nebraskas. <laughs> yeah. taking, yeah. taking requests. I've lived. In fact, this part Nebraskas. I've lived in many, and I grew up in Nebraskas. I uh, I lived. I've lived in around, around Wichita. I've lived down by Pittsburgh. I lived. Um, I was born in Topeka. I lived in Manhattan. <laughs> I lived in Omaha. Yeah, wow. this is my where this is where I was Scary. my home turf. Um, You're in a Branson. You know the yeah again like I think we're hazes if people aren't familiar and then like Carney up here, Carney in Nebraska, Hayes in Kansas. These are like essentially good areas to cut it off because if you go west of there, then you're like more influenced by Denver. Uh, east of there, you're more influenced by Omaha, Kansas City. Uh, so, yeah, no, you did pretty good with that, actually. And we can work on that name. Let us know in the suggestions. Yes, please. That's <laughs> one of my least favorite. I have I have a few names in here I don't really like, and that's one of them. So if you have suggestions, I'd love it. All right. And then the yellow here, we got the High Plains going all the way. But you included Colorado Springs. So we're right up in the mountains here, too. Est- Estacado. Yes, so wow. estacado means staked in Spanish, and it comes from the uh, El Llano Estacado, which is um, it's more of the down here in the south area, and it's a, it, it means the staked plains. It's it's just kind of a geographical region. Yeah, I would include up. Albuquerque and Estacado. I would include maybe Santa Fe. That way, Colorado Springs and Pueblo are not part of that because I feel like that just needs to be with Denver somehow no. or, or, or something else. Like it just feels well, like. I was thinking uh, this is Colorado Springs is very conservative, unlike Denver. Uh, uh, true. Yeah. I mean, relatively speaking, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> relatively yeah. Sure. Oh, that's good that you consider that, though. Yeah. And then with uh, we've got, like I said, the high plains, you got western Kansas, western Oklahoma, western Texas, but also a very dry area. So that that's yeah. a big, uh, I like what you did with Oklahoma, uh, and you're keeping the name Oklahoma. Beautiful. I like how you have Tulsa and Oklahoma City together, and still because I, I feel like they're very linked. Like yeah, separate them. Yeah. And then okay, Texas. Let's see what you did. <laughs> uh, apologizing in advance. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Houston has to be its own for sure. Um, yeah, and that's that one was. Also, that doesn't even include the entire Houston metro. It's very so. That's very, uh, mm-hmm. very chopped up. Houston's the fourth largest metro in the country, um, right? And then right after that is the Fort Worth Dallas metro. Can you zoom in on uh, Fort Worth the, on the Metroplex? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, Piney Woods. What a great name. Was that an, another Reddit suggestion? Uh, no, I think. Let me check my special thanks. Uh, yeah, no, I think I, I came up with that one. Well, good job. <laughs> and here's another name suggestion for West Fork, by the way. They suggest uh, naming it Trinity after the Trinity River. So something to consider. Thank yes. You. So Archicosa is actually named after the Trinity River. It's what the, um, what some um, Native American group used to call it, or they still do call it that. And I think there's even been um, like a, a small movement to have the River changed the name of the river changed Arcticosa. Oh, okay, I had no idea. That's awesome. So yeah, uh, I, I I like the you got Tyler in there. You've got 
essentially northeastern Texas that definitely has a lot of, in common culturally. Then Dallas, uh, you kind of you split it there with is Irving in West Fork or is that an Ar Arc Ecosa? Uh, that is in West Fork, so there's kind of a line pointing down to that. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, uh, I do think that Fort Worth and Dallas um, are actually quite different cities. People uh, that live in that area, they realize it, but, um, and then a lot of the suburbs in Dallas even seem to, to me kind of have a more uppity vibe compared to the suburbs of Fort Worth, like, or mm. that part of the, like the further West in the Metro you get, it seems a little bit more down to earth. And I, I apologize if I offended anybody by saying that, but <laughs> that's just my vibes and visiting the area. Um, but it's a, I mean, it's massive. Like so many people live in this area. It's one of the fastest growing parts of the country. It's and huge. I can't believe how big it is. Yeah. I'm glad that you put McKinney and Plano and um, I'm going to assume uh, oh, what's that other city that's up there, right around there. Um, uh, there's a, the university of Northern Te North Texas is there. What is, oh gosh. That, that, that would be in Piney Woods as well. Um, Denton? Yes, Denton. Yeah. Uh, Denton's kind of up to the left. Um, oh, no. Denton's in West Fork. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. And then, let's see, you got Waco together with what? Austin. Okay. And, oh, San Antonio is a separate. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't realize you did that. So yeah, Austin. Yeah, and, someone pointed that out to me. They said you should have kept Austin and San Antonio together because um, they're called they're the tech a tech, big tech area, I guess. Yeah, also quickly growing, and I mean San Marcos, even in between them, is one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Like, so yeah, I mean, eh, I personally prefer the north south. I kind of like what you did there, kind of splitting them up because San Antonio and Austin do have. Actually, I was going to do a compared video comparing those two cities for, Ooh, that'd for that be cool. reason because you yeah, have the the difference. That'd be interesting. Um, but then College Station, you put over here uh, with a lot of the Houston suburbs, like in mm -hmm. even going into Louisiana, right? Yeah, uh, Lake Charles. Yeah, I'll, yeah, that works. Uh, Corpus Christi, part of its own, like Gulf Coast little state here, right? With a uh, yeah, Lake Jack. Oh, in Sugarland, huh? Okay. Oh, Corpus Christi is down. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, and then yeah, I'm glad you did this too, because like I'm glad you separated this little area where Padre Island is and all that from further inland. Um, there's uh, Laredo. Oh, Uvalde, which is been in the news um and then all the way down to brownsville so you got the rio grande yep which uh it's huge it's a huge. quite the area is el paso in there yep, yep. Right. but yeah I, you know what el paso and brownsville i think they actually fit well together in this giant state so yeah i think it works yeah very uh border very uh Hispanic. Mm hmm. Much more conservative, I think, than other parts of the, the state. Well, certain parts of the other, I guess, Eastern Texas is also. Uh, Luther it's against a maybe swing state. What do you think? Rio Grande? You think it could be a swing state? Uh, El Paso would make it that way, but I think, uh, I think down by like, Southern Texas has has been going more and more conservative. <laughs> yeah, uh, Luther Harris again says, "Call the Austin State Travis after the county. Call the San Antonio State Bexar after the county." So, the San Antonio State uh, Bexar. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, Yana Yana is um is an old Native American name for uh, San Antonio. I believe. Oh. Okay. Well, then that makes perfect sense to name, to name it that. Okay. Well, we already talked about Estacado. So, yeah, we're heading to uh, Hawaii. Is, is Did you do anything different with Hawaii? Uh, well, this is kind of jumping to the West Coast uh, because it is uh, included with uh, the Central Coast of California. Oh, so wow. you've got so the central coast of California, you've got Hawaii, and you've got all of the Pacific territories. 
I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we may have to. I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you on that one. <laughs> now, Hawaii's got 1.4 million people, so it needs yeah. a lot. Yeah, I so. understand. Well, did, uh, okay, so then I get, let's just get it out of the way then. Alaska, what'd you do with Alaska then? And since there's probably oh, so Alaska's got about 700,000 people, so I included it with uh, parts of Washington and Oregon, but not the like super urban parts, I guess. I mean, if you do have some of the Seattle Metro in there with Tacoma. Oh, so you put it with Cascadia? Y yeah. Okay. So Cascadia. Cascadia uh, yeah. Well, yeah, Fairbanks does not feel like Cascadia. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get some hate on that one. Yeah. How could you do that? <laughs> no, I'm open right. to suggestions. That's a tricky one, though. What do you do? I mean, when there's hardly anybody, yeah. you kind of just have to. I mean, 700,000 is not even half of what you need. So. Yeah, you might just have to. I don't know. I would say uh, Alaska, Hawaii, actually might just be better off their own thing, you know? Mm. Uh, just call them like, or even all the Pacific possessions, like Samoa and Northern Mariana Island, just all of them is just say Pacifica. All of them are Pacifica because hmm. people forget how much of Alaska borders the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could work. Sure. All right. Uh, so sorry to kind of get us off course there, but let's look at Arizona, New Mexico. Okay. And Navajo, yes, there's a they are that's a lot of a land that they already control anyway in that area. Yeah, so that's another state I wanted to I can, um, have have that whole territory not not break up the Navajo Nation. So that's that contains the entire Navajo Nation. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And you got Phoenix, of course, being the fifth largest metro. Um, but you also have Mesa separated okay. there and uh yeah another big region uh but uh, you know southern colorado most of new mexico southeastern utah yep there's i mean yeah culturally i think a lot of that does work um how about what'd you do with utah <laughs> you oh my gosh Oh, okay. Okay. Good. You didn't, you didn't put Las Vegas and Salt Lake city in the same one thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Mormons would not have liked that, <laughs> but you, yeah. So it's very East to West here. So as far West as, um, definitely parts of, of Nevada. Yeah. The Great um, Basin. The Great Basin. Yeah. And then Salt Lake is Salt Lake city is the biggest Metro with, uh, going as far East as Fort Collins. Wow. And Cheyenne, mm -hmm. Wyoming. Yeah, and this is named after the uh, the Laramide Anticline, uh, which is a geological event, however many millions of years ago I don't remember, but uh, and it was a the geological event that created most of the um, features in this area. So like the um, you know the arch, the all the beautiful stuff in Utah and Colorado. <laughs> I think yeah. someone's thinking like Laramidia, like chlamydia or something. No. <laughs> Uh, oh, Deseret would be a good name. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, that was the original name of when the Mormon, the first Mormon settlers went to the area. True. Although, like that's uh, all the way out to Fort Collins. It's yeah. Okay. Uh, could you go north? Yeah, keep going north, please. Yeah. You got Shoshone. Okay. Oh, you, and you can have that all the way to the Pacific Ocean, all the way. Yeah, this one's going to um, raise some eyebrows, I'm sure. <laughs> Got Reno together with Boise. Looks yeah. like most of um, Southern Oregon and Northern California, northeast or Northwestern Nevada, and a big chunk of Idaho, parts of Montana, Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, very sparsely populated. You, you have to work with what you got, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know how uh, people from Jackson Hole are going to feel about uh, being with people from uh, Arcata. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 
just in general thinking of Oregon residents lumped together with Wyoming residents or California, or even I know Northern California is culturally quite a bit different than the rest of the state, but still mm -hmm. like I, <laughs> the coastal part of Northern California is very, uh, very liberal. Yeah. Then that, you go inland and it's very the opposite. Yeah. However, a California Republican is different than a Re Wyoming Republican. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, and then we kind of already saw Big Sky, but you that's another big east to west. So, we, um, is that Mino, Minot? How do you pronounce that? Yeah. Uh, I think they call it a Minot, Minot, or Minot. Minot. I never knew how to say that. Um, so, that's all the way to North Dakota. Yeah. Bismarck. Oh, you got Bismarck in there too. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and then Billings and then Bozeman. Then, so then you got a lot of the Great Plains, but then you got the Rocky Mountains. You got Missoula, Keurder Lane. You got Lewiston, Walla Walla. Ah, oh, yeah. All the way almost to the Willamette Valley, which with Willamette makes sense as a separate thing, which uh, you separated it from. Or are you you included Portland in there as well? Because Portland's not quite yeah. there for the three point three million. Yeah, so right. that that Willamette makes a lot of sense. Cascadia, uh, obviously, we talked about Alaska earlier, so maybe yeah. Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Seattle also like that. That that's that's great. Yeah, makes sense to me too. Oh, Spokane is another big Spokane having. Uh, I, I would say yes, that Spokane does have a lot in common with a lot of these Montana cities like Billings or even uh, Bismarck. <laughs> sure, why not? That's big a city in the state. Yeah, and the sky really is big in most of those places. People forget that eastern and eastern Washington, eastern Oregon are um, lots of big sky there. Uh, Grassland. Well, big That's sky. Um... I know Montana's nickname is the Treasure State, but they also call it the Land of the Big Sky or something like that. Yeah, but we always talk about our Big Sky here in Kansas too. Basically, anywhere where there's not many trees. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that just leaves Sorry. the rest of California and yeah, well, Mojave. We we said so. That includes Vegas and uh, parts of Arizona. Arizona. Part of California too, up to the Sierras. Oh yeah, and then Central Valley. I see you try to like do something separate there, which is good with with Fresno and Bakersfield with mm -hmm. Tulare, Tular, Tular Tulare, Tulare. Okay, what's that named after? Um, it's a type of plant that grows out there. You've got, also got a, I think there's a town called Tulare, you know, Tulare County. So it's a name that pops up a lot around there. Okay. Sacramento area. Um, but you put it all the way to the Pacific Ocean, like wine country, basically. Yeah. Country. I Hello. wanted to have that West Bay and East Bay thing going on where those were separate. And so, yeah, that was tricky to figure out. Yeah, I think that could work. It's Calistoga. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, there's a town out there named Calistoga, and uh, I, I like the sound of it. <laughs> yeah, I do like it too. It's a it's a good name. Sounds like a state. Yeah, it really does. But Sui Soon is what's up with that name? Sassoon. So the, there's a, a bay here right around. Um, I think it goes out to the. It's called the Sassoon Bay, and I I don't recall what that is named after i assume something native american okay yeah so you separate oakland from san francisco and you and instead go south um west or southeast to san jose mm -hmm. uh, i think that that's logical yeah that makes sense uh and then santa cruz is into the the next one pacific yeah and that's the oh. one that has uh, hawaii and the pacific territories okay okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, we can rework that. Um, sure. Yeah, no, I like I, most of this, though. Okay, so now the part of the country that you're probably most familiar with, Southern California? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, we can't I, was, I was actually just here. So I was uh, there for VidCon in Anaheim. I was also in Los Angeles. Yeah, you you uh, went to like, Disneyland and Universal Studios, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And did, turned it into a family vacation. So, yeah, I love that part of the country, especially the weather, <laughs> the climate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, you zoomed in here. Uh, you got... So Orange Anaheim, County. Orange County, basically Santa Ana, Anaheim is a uh, separate. Isn't Orange County like the s second or third largest county in the whole country or something ridiculous? Uh, uh, population wise, maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's, got, it's got exactly like 3.3 million. So Orange County is, I think, I think, did I do something weird? Like I included Camp Pendleton with it or something, but um, yeah, Orange County is basically Orange County. So <laughs> makes it easy. Yeah, and then LA is—is is it LA County or is it? Um, so no, it's split up. I, I even went through the trouble of in wow. the inset. You can see where the borders are. Um, yeah, and that's you know that's still pretty rough. I mean, um, those are straight lines know. though. What does that follow? So like, uh, I don't know if my oh interstate. Is You've got Alameda Street, the I-105, the I-10, the I-5, the 91, mm. Lakewood Boulevard, the 405. So, I see. It makes sense. I mean, like, I think in terms of like Western, like along the closer, the closer you get to the coast, it seems obviously it's it's nicer weather. It's it's more. Uh, pricey real estate for that reason yeah <laughs> you are to the beach um and then you get further inland it seems like there's more like that everybody i know that's where they live like the <laughs> the uh the valley like you go further inland where it gets hot yeah um, where pomona is pasadena um so Shiv shivanga shivanga pavunga and then um to the north you have tahunga and these three names come from uh I guess I think they were like Native American settlements from uh, before the Europeans came, and they they were in their respective states. If I if I did this correctly, Shivanga Shivanga was somewhere in the um, the foothills area where like Pasadena would be, and then you had uh, Tahunga was in the San Fernando Valley, and yeah, Pavunga was somewhere over there in the west. Okay, nice. Oh, and the San Gabriel. Mountains, there's the border. So, uh, Riverside area is that part of uh, this? Is Inland Empire? Oh, that's part of the Inland Empire. Oh, the Inland Empire, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's a region, anyway. Yeah, that's uh, kind of where I grew up out down here in Temecula. Uh, so, I, I would be for Alta Sonora. Okay, and uh, Alta Sonora was where, yeah. where it gets dry. That's where. Oh, and you included Tucson in there as well. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically that you got the Sonora Desert in there, and you got part of the Mojave as well. And it's named after Sonora um, in Mexico, one of Mexico's states, and it being north of that. Kind of like how you have California, and then you got Baja California. Now you have Sonora, and you have Alta Sonora. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> well, essentially, like that's the hottest, driest part of the country. <laughs> Yeah, probably. So they're going to be arguing about water rights. <laughs> yeah, they are. That's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, and then San Diego's is that what's that one called? Casoy, uh, also Kasoy. the name of a of a village. Uh, and my word, now you have Old Town San Diego. Uh, okay. There used to be a village there called Casoy. Huh. All right. Well, let's. Uh, is that it? Did we get it all? I think we kind of glossed over uh, Palmetto a little bit. I don't remember talking about that, but just in case we did, you know, there's. Yeah, we did kind of zip right through it. So it's Charleston, Columbia, yeah. as far in, in inland as Columbia. But then up there by Sur Surf City is, um, gosh, what is that, North Carolina? Uh, yeah, that would be because Wilmington is. Yeah. North I think Palmetto, that's a good looking state there. I, I like it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't bring it up. 
<laughs> yeah, no. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I, I kind of wanted to, uh, I'm sure people would want to know, but I have a weird, what I originally did was I marked off like the, the biggest city there and, and people would, would correct me and say, well, no, actually this is the biggest city. And, and what they were actually talking about was the metro area because sometimes you have a, a state where the largest municipality is not the same as the largest metro area. So I, I, I came up with this uh, sort of system. I don't know if it's any good, but basically you have squares representing metro areas, circles mm. representing municipalities, and then you got black representing the biggest and white representing the second biggest. So yeah, it, it might take a while to kind of figure it out, but we should have mentioned that at the very beginning. didn't? <laughs> yeah. I kind of think maybe we should have, but yeah. Always look at the key the legend. Um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. I think basically like I said at the beginning of this, it's meant to be something to get a conversation started. I think a lot of folks don't even think about this type of stuff, how like we don't have to keep the same orders. We, And a lot of times within a state, you do have conflict because of regional cultural differences and a lot of it's political. And um, yeah, so I, here's the whole map. Uh, like I said, we'll put the um, a link to it if you want to, it, it is okay for them to download, right, and share. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, go even make your own edits to it if you want. Just credit me, obviously, and um, and you know I've got that special thanks down there for the reason because some people helped me out with it. So you know, yeah. give credit where credit is due, and you know, do whatever you want with it. Well, you yeah. you heard me being nitpicky about it, but if you also have comments or. Actually, if you have questions now, we, we could stick around for a few minutes and about yeah, the map or really absolutely. anything. I'm down. Okay. Well, oh, Mr. Terry's in the chat. How about that? Uh, he says. Oh, thank you. Did I obviously, I think this must have taken hours of your life. You have to be passionate uh, um, about it. Over 100 hours, yeah. Wow. Um lots of multiple attempts so how did i make the map well yeah. uh, so let me see if i can uh, find that um well there's this there's this map the u.s census makes and it's a map of uh all of the core based statistical areas in the united states and that is a core based statistical area is either a metropolitan statistical area or a micropolitan statistical area um and that's basically that's any area in the country that has a densely populated urban core. And um, for micropolitan, you've, you've got to have between 10 and 50,000 people. And for metropolitan, you've got to have more than 50,000 um, for the urban core, not the entire area. Um, and so I take this map and I went through and I, uh, uh, I right like I, in Photoshop and I open a new layer. Um, and I wrote by hand, like, um, the population over each area. So, like, I'd look up the population of, like, um, Atlanta. And was, I don't know how many. What would that be? Okay, San Diego, I know, is um, uh, about 3 million. So I'd write a 3 over that. And I'd do that until the whole map was filled out. And then I used those numbers to... Um, I'd kind of add them up until I had three million, and I draw, draw a border. Mm -hmm. Just repeated that until I got a hundred. You got some big time, uh, so uh, YouTube channels in the ch in watching Geography King said excellent map, <laughs> well made, beautiful cartography, great borders. Genie vloggers thank here, you, thank you. Cool. yeah, you got some some new fans here. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, Osbers again. I, I enjoy doing stuff like this. This is terrific. Yeah, I mean, hopefully this inspires some of you to make your own maps. Uh, I hope so. I hope it inspires people. I would have liked to have something uh, more accurate. And if there's anyone out there who is really good with like 
ArcGIS or QGIS or something and um, could make something more accurate, that would be amazing. Calling all cartographers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I mean, obviously, when we talk about um, maps a lot on this channel, we're talking about representatives um, or uh, legislative districts. Mm -hmm. And what they do a lot of times is they're just basing it off of other maps that were made by cartographers. They're, they're not doing anything new. A lot of times they're drawing just like you did and tracing over, you know, old maps. And yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, any other questions here? Questions, comments, suggestions, uh, especially for names. Although um, I don't have any big plans to. Uh... <laughs> well, if uh, we are looking at a new map of the United States, Hardy Hat, and this is how it's going to be. There's going to be 100 states now, and they're all going to have roughly equal population. <laughs> Portland yeah. should be in the same state as Eureka. Mm -hmm. um, I guess because they're both very, uh, they both got, uh, I don't know, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that? I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, what was the editing software again? Was it just Photoshop, you said? Just Photoshop, yeah. Uh, oh, that's a question for me about the, uh, maybe, the, I don't know, maybe John Adams, I guess, even though he was... A leader in some ways. Um, oh, Bexar is pronounced like bear. Did you know that? No. Bear. Okay. Oh. Boise. Boise and SLC. Have a lot in common. Actually, a yeah. lot of the Mormon population is in Idaho. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of my viewers are excited about something like this because, like, it's more representative maybe like just even having yeah. more more states general um, general. even uh, just i mean uh increasing the number of senators I, I would would work i mean uh wyoming would need to have more than two senators for there to be uh proportional amount of senators <laughs> 100 is a nice even number too i like it uh, with 39 i was like ah that make that the <laughs> The old uh, CD and me is like, nah. Uh, where Where is Boise? That was in... Uh, uh, Shoshone, right Shoshone. there. Right in the yeah. middle of that big orange state. Yeah, the Electoral College, may, maybe we could even salvage that a lot better. In my, I, I'm not a fan of the Electoral College. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. Osborne's like, is this a shower thought that turned into a bigger thing? <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Split the north and south Chesapeake into east and west and make the... I think we mentioned this, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. And, they, and what was the other thing you said? Uh, oh. Um, and make the west Piedmont Plateau and Mountains a... Uh, make a Chesapeake state. Okay, yeah, basically they're saying the same thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. This person here is concerned about it being horribly unfair. Large metros would control multiple states instead of just one. Um, uh, well, but at least you'd be... I think that actually a lot of times metro areas already kind of like, for example, here in Kansas... Um, Kansas City kind of dominates the entire state, <laughs> like in terms of, um, or Northeast Kansas dominates the rest of the state because that's where most of the people live. And so I feel like if you lump together others, like have have more in common culturally, then that, that might solve that problem. So kind of the opposite, actually. <laughs> it would be better for those in rural areas. There's quite a few states in here that don't have terribly large metro areas also. Yeah. Oh, this is that's what this person essentially said. Good job, Sage TDS. They already control the states. Yeah, LA would dominate Arizona. I just don't see how that would happen. I mean, like um, we're splintering it all up. Yeah, um, it's, it's in a diff completely different state. 
Uh, Michael wants you to zoom in to Connecticut again, and I can. Uh, yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know it, it gets. If I go to my website, up the issue up there at the top, uh, and then and there's a link to my map there if you want to look at it yourselves. Yeah, there, it's a little disorienting when you get to some of these because it's like, whoa, it's so different. But uh, so you got, yeah, I, I like this split here with Connecticut. I mean, you mentioned maybe making that part of or continuing up with the Connecticut River up to Western Massachusetts, but uh, oh, the website. Um, yeah, is, dot WTF. Yeah, it's listed right there. I'll put it in the comments here. The nice uh, URL, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can um, stay on the map. Should I stay on the map? Or? I think we're good. All right, last chance. I think we're going to wrap it up so I can go bowling here. <laughs> Seriously, we're going bowling after. <laughs> oh, Hermes. Um, is Shoshone red or blue? I would say just off. I mean, yes, I think it would end up being red. I think it would definitely be red. That's another exercise to do. We could have went into more detail, like how how would this change how many red and blue states there are, or swing states? Yeah, I made one a, a colored map, um, but you know I don't know how accurate it is. It's it's a really rough guess. But um, really, can to... they find that on the website as well? Um, no, it's on Reddit somewhere. Um, oh man, you should put it on the website. Um, um i want to see it <laughs> okay now I'll, I'll try to get it on my website in the after this hurricane bait yeah gulf coast also like anywhere along um those i, I mean the southeastern coast states as well hello They said they don't see a link to the map on that website. So no, it's on the left there. On the left, it's just it's just a link that says map. Okay, <laughs> it's there. Very salamander like. Are you trying to gerrymander? <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops! I didn't mean to show that one. All right. Well, Mr. Yeah. Terry. So. Uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up, but um, I want to thank you for, for joining um, my stream, and uh, thanks for the work you put into the map. It's Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, uh, I'm glad that I read your email when you reached out. Sometimes I miss them, so I apologize for folks who try to reach out with stuff like this, <laughs> but I think can it's I, really uh, cool. Can I plug my music real quick? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I make some you know, weird electronic music. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, some people have told me I sound like Aphex Twin, and uh, that's on my website too. I'd love it if people checked out my music. Thank I you. love Aphex Twin. Also, he's wearing a Sonic Youth t shirt. Which yeah, so you know I have good taste in music. So Yeah, I've seen Sonic Youth live back in 2004. I saw them in New York. It must have been cool. Yeah, they were, the audience was mad because they were, it was mostly noise. They were like being all experimental. But yeah, no, <laughs> and if you, you ever want to volunteer music to, for me, for my videos, I, I'll promote it. Sure. <laughs> we can talk about that off here. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. And I hope the rest of your day is phenomenal. And uh, have a wonderful time. Check out Thank the map. You, we'll I'll try to get the electoral one up, too. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everyone.